everyone! So as you may have seen, I have been invited to be the guest host for this, the seventh round of the Queer Lit Readathon, which is probably my favourite readathon on the entire internet. I don't think that's any secret. I vlog it pretty much every time and always participate. So it was just an honour <laughs> to be asked by Kathy and Rogan, the creators of the readathon, to guest host this time around. And I am having so much fun getting people's recommendations as well as seeing their TBRs for the readathon, which if you don't know, it's taking place from the 5th to the 12th of June, whatever time zone you are in. And ahead of that, myself, Kathy and Rogan are all uploading our own TBRs today. So once you've watched this video, please do go make sure to go and check out their TBRs. I'll have them linked in the description box down below. And as you may also know, there is a bingo board. The bingo board has 12 challenges on it with no real expectation that you read 12 books. I mean, you might. <laughs> Me personally, never gonna happen <laughs> in the space of a week. But as a prompt to help you read more diversely and perhaps out of your comfort zone and read more widely across the LGBTQ plus spectrum. So I have actually managed to come up with a TBR that I think ticks off every single box over the series of five, possibly six books. So I'm pretty proud of myself because given that some of these are comic books, I think I could maybe read them all and I could maybe tick off all the boxes. Again, no pressure if you don't want to. You could perhaps just hone in on one single line or just read freely as long as you're reading queerly. But as a guest host, I really did want to like dive in head first. So that's what we're here to talk about. I'm gonna show you the books that I plan on reading during the Queer Lit Readathon and hopefully hear a little bit more about what you plan on reading. So first up is the group read. So every round, Kathy, Rogan and their guest host to pick a group read so that if people want to read together and want to read the same thing as other people they will know in advance that this is one the hosts will definitely be reading and probably more people that are participating in the readathon as well so you'll definitely be able to hear their thoughts um, and talk about it with them. This is like I mentioned Freshwater by Akweke Amezi and Amezi is a non-binary author that I've been meaning to read for ages. People have raved about their writing ever since this came out. Was this perhaps their debut novel? But a few have come out since then including YA and Adult of which this is adult and like I said I heard nothing but fantastic things. This one I believe is also semi-autobiographical at least uh, the protagonist has some of the same experiences and some of the same identities as the author and they explore them through this story. So I'm really looking forward to reading it and I'm particularly looking forward to discussing it with other people because I think it's one that is going to pack a punch and have a lot of meat to it so it will really lend itself to discussion but if you're interested for me this book ticks off of course the uh, group read prompt. It also ticks off the prompt for a book set not in your continent because it goes from Nigeria to the US, so Africa to North America, whereas I live in Europe. It could also be used for the hard-hitting contemporary prompt as well as the underrepresented identity prompt, but as I'll talk about throughout this TBR, a few of my books overlap, so multiple of these books could fit into multiple of the prompts, but I think as a selection they tick off everything, so that's a good thing. So yes, that's fresh water. We then have a non-fiction book, which is We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib, a queer Muslim memoir, which is a subtitle down the side here, and the subtitle is pretty self-explanatory. It is the memoir of a queer Muslim woman, and one of the prompts for this uh, readathon is to read a memoir, but then also there is the religion prompt, which is to read a book that deals with religion in some way, whether it's fiction or non-fiction. Religion is discussed, and perhaps the life of a queer person as a member of a religion is discussed, which this one obviously does, so I'm super excited to read it. It's one that I actually picked up explicitly for the readathon. I mean, I wanted to read it anyway, so this was just my excuse, and now I can't wait to read it. Then we have Moonstruck Volume 3, which is the third volume in the Moonstruck comic book series. I absolutely adore this series. Volumes 1 and 2 are some of my favourite comic books I've ever read, and I'm super excited to have the third one. It's particularly wonderful because of the diversity of queer representation you see within this graphic novel. It's set in a world a lot like our own, but which also has magical creatures within it, and most of our protagonists are magical creatures but they live pretty ordinary lives despite this and within their numbers we have a diversity of representation for both gender identity and sexualities which is wonderful and why I'm also using this to tick off the intersectional prompt on the bingo board as well as the work that's shorter than a novel because comic book bind-ups 
fall pretty firmly into that shorter than a novel category. I'll definitely be reading it a lot more quickly than I would read a novel. On the topic of comic books, we then have Cute Mutant Volume 1, which I don't have a physical copy of, but is currently available on Kindle Unlimited, so I'll be reading it on there. And this one probably, as you can guess from the title, is inspired by X-Men, but tonally I think is more similar to something like Moonstruck because it is a little bit more cute and happy and light. But the first volume is also literally called Mutant Pride, which I have a good feeling about because I hear that this book is not only just about mutant pride but also about LGBTQ plus pride and the reason I know that is because it was recommended to me by so many people in the comments of my announcement video for this readathon. I was struggling to think of books for the superhero prompt as somebody who doesn't really read a lot of superhero books or comics and multiple people recommended this one as a queer superhero story so I've decided to use it to tick off both the superhero prompt and the recommended prompt because it was recommended to me by so many of you and I think that that's absolutely perfect. I'd also never heard of it before so it's really fun to have discovered it because of this readathon. Oh and if it wasn't clear I'm also using Moonstruck for the brings me joy prompt given that I know how much joy the first two volumes brought me. Next up we have another hard hitting contemporary that I'm also using for the summer vibes prompt this is a little bit of a tricky one because it's so open to interpretation but I do think there's something kind of summary about a good old thriller <laughs> and for that I'm going to be reading Eight Pieces of Silver by Patrice Lawrence which is a YA thriller about a girl whose sister goes missing and she must piece together the clues of her sister's disappearance from items and clues she finds in her sister's bedroom and from what I understand the protagonist Becky is also queer. I don't know about her sister but Becky definitely is, according to Goodreads. It's always difficult <laughs> when a book isn't explicitly about being queer and like the plot isn't coming out or going to pride to know exactly what LGBTQ plus representation is in a book and what form that takes because it can be labelled as LGBTQ plus or queer on Goodreads for example but the blurb might not give anything away about that which I do think is a fortunate because I still think there's a tendency within publishing to sometimes hide the fact that books are queer in the hopes that more people will pick them up because that's a deterrent apparently. Anyway, <laughs> discussion for another day. Then last but not least we have a historical fiction romance novella which could be used for the vintage prompt as it's set in the 19th century and it could be used for the shorter than a novel prompt again. This one is your quintessential 19th century Regency romance that I absolutely adore but with the bonus of being about two women falling in love and I'm always on the hunt for more historical romances about women falling in love with women because I think it's something that is much less common and much much harder to find so I'm be meaning to read this one and I'm really excited to do that. Now you might have noticed there are two prompts I've yet to mention and there is a reason for both of those. So first up is the M spec prompt which is to read a book with M spec representation so that might be in the form of bisexuality, pansexuality or a whole host of other uh, sexual identities that can come under the M spec umbrella. And this one's actually super important to me because I'm bisexual but as I've already touched on it can often be really difficult to find out what the queer representation is in a book without talking to somebody who has read it. And then even for example if you know it's a romance between two men or two women you don't necessarily know the character's sexual identities before going into the book. And I'm not 100% sure about the characters or authors sexual identities of all the books I've mentioned here. So if you know that there's M spec representation in any of these books please let me know because I do want to take that problem off but I'm struggling to just know which books on my shelves have M spec representation so yes like I mentioned please do let me know if you know of any of these or any other books that you think I might like. I do have one book or one comic book that I was curious if it might be M spec but I'm not sure because I know in this book one of our characters in the women women romance this is bingo love is married to a man at one point but I don't know if that's just because of societal pressures at the time in which she's living or whether she is genuinely attracted to both men and women I have no idea like I said it's very hard to tell so please let me know. Then lastly we have the choose your own prompt which is obviously the one most open to interpretation and is going to be the most different for the greatest number of people. For this one I decided I wanted to make sure to read a book on Kindle Unlimited because I am currently paying for a subscription and want to get the most out of it whilst I'm subscribed since I don't plan on staying subscribed forever and therefore Cute Mutants is a way for me to tick this one off. So 
that is my plan for the week of reading. That is my queer TBR that I'm super duper excited about, but I would love to know what you plan on reading. Let me know if you have posted a TBR on YouTube or on your blog or on Instagram already. But equally feel free to just simply tell me what books you plan on reading in the comments. Once again, don't forget to check out Kathy and Rogan whose channels will be linked down below as well as the Queer Lit Readathons Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone.